Hey guys, thanks for joining us. We take a break from the fishing here to join Mr. Trace Tomke from Tomke Fish Farms to show us a fantastic way to fillet a trout. Now, if you want to fillet a trout, you want to talk to a guy that owns a fish farm and Trace here's got the really cool facility here in Colorado um, where they raise trout. They do a ton of stuff for kids. Uh, where like, you run like 1,200 kids a year or something through your kids program. 600 per event twice a year. 600 per event twice a year. They let them come catch these big giant trout like this. So uh, this trout came originally from a hatchery. Now yes. he's been living in one of your lakes out here. Yes. And uh, they normally eat in fathead minnows and shad and all that kind of stuff. And crawdad. And crawdads. And now you're going to show us the best way to fillet them. So we've got the brand new Outdoor Edge Real Flex Fillet Knives here. Um, I've been using Outdoor Edge knives for a very long time, but these this fillet knives that they came out with are brand new. I've been using them for big game and hunting. So we've enlisted Trace's help to show us how it is that he, as a guy that runs a fish farm, can fillet a trout. Now this would work equally well for a salmon, correct? Yep, any of the any of the salmon eds. I want to point out that there's a spike sticking out of that end of the board, guys, and that spike, as you can see right there, he just can impale the fish and it will hold it there. So if you have a board, that's a really good trick. The first cut I make is behind the gill plate down to till you hear your knife hit the backbone. Okay. The second cut I make is a skin cut just under the hide and the only reason I do that is that gives your knife a little line to follow when you when you uh, do your fillet and it prevents you from losing too much meat. Gotcha. The third cut is we're going to break the pin bones all the way down the end of the fish, all the way off the table. And the pin bones are little tiny bones, guys, that connect the spine through the middle part of the meat column. You're not cutting the rib bones. No, we don't want to get into the chest cavity of the fish. Gotcha. Okay. okay. So I'm going to do this in one motion all the way off the end of the fish okay. tail at a 45 degree angle. Gotcha. Yep. And then uh, keep your knife pressing down against the backbone. Okay. Got it. So nicely done yep. there. So now you're cut through all the way down yes. to the rib cage. Yes. Okay. And this fish uh, was alive just a few moments yeah, yeah, ago, of course. so it's going to bleed. Fresh is better. That's fine. People understand if you're going to fillet a fish, there's going to be blood involved. Yep. Uh, to take this fillet off, your knife will follow the rib cage of the fish if you hold it at a 45 degree angle and you go towards the tail of the fish Okay. by pressing down and pulling back. So press down and pull back. Down and pull back. And then yeah, that way you don't waste sharp, any meat. Very sharp knife. Oh, oh, you I got, got a fish the, full of roe right there. I did. Look at that. I did. So, And guys, those are tasty for starters. I want to point out those eggs are actually delicious, but on top of that, they're also excellent bait. Yes. My next step is to locate the pin bones, and you do that by using your finger and pulling it towards the head of the fish, and you'll feel them sticking up like needles. And so I've located them. They're right there. The fourth cut we make is under the pin bone towards the head of the fish, and your knife will follow those pin bones perfectly. Just like that. And oh. you do not want to go through the skin in right, your fish. Right, yeah, we always want to leave the skin on anytime we're dealing with a salmonid, guys, because there's a lot of fat that's underneath that skin it, uh, that's very nutritious for one, and for two, it leaves excellent flavor on your fish. Correct. The fifth cut you make is on top of the pin bone, same direction towards the head of the fish. And again, your knife will follow the bones. You don't even have to aim. It'll just do it automatically. Okay. And then the sixth cut is rocking that piece of meat out that contains the pin bones and you're going to discard it. You are going to lose a little bit of meat. Sure, of course. But you're also going to lose bone. Yeah, and the other choice is to be picking bones out of your fish and nobody wants to do no. that. No, and now the, the filet is 100% boneless. Boneless skin on, so now you'll rinse this thing down. Yep. We'll go ahead, if you were going to freeze it, you would go ahead and vacuum bag it. Yes. If I was going to eat it as soon as possible, I would personally soak it in iced and salted water. Um, that will help pull the rest of the blood out of the fish for starters. And for second of all, uh, it will firm the meat up just a little bit and uh, make for really delicious meat. But if I'm going to freeze it, I'm just going to rinse it down. We'll go ahead and vacuum bag it and get it put away. So, uh, th and basically you would repeat the process on the other side of the fish as well. Same process, identical. Okay guys, so now that the flays are nice and dry and trimmed up, uh, what's your next step? Uh, next step is I, I, I get them prepared to bag, uh, to vacuum seal, and I make a diaper uh, to absorb the remaining fish slime and whatever moisture when it starts to vacuum out because the seal has to be dry to make sure it's always going to be perfect. I just take my fillet, uh, tail first, okay. on the first one. Oh yeah, sort meat, of next to each meat other, side yang, up. yang and yang style. Yeah, meat side up. Okay. And the next fillet nice is, is flat, opposite, right? uh, skin side up and head in first. Okay. So they store together a little bit tighter 
The more right. air you can get out, the better. The better off you are. Yeah. Sure, that makes sense. Yep. Okay, so and, there we and have. Air that. is what causes freezer burn. People don't realize that. Right, spoilage. Then we make the diaper. I call it. You call it paper, paper towel. Okay. And you put that in real close to the fish, and you want it longer than your bag is wide okay. because if you do it longer. It'll, it'll, it'll fold and right. it'll absorb more moisture. Gotcha, okay. So just like that, and then it'll compress. Okay. Then you trim your bag to your desired uh, length. Okay. And okay. seal a meal. Gotcha. So. And we just stick that in there with the diaper off of the heat strip. Yeah, yeah, sure. Not on the heat, heat strip. Put it down, back and seal. Okay. And guys, I've had fish uh, that, that Trace here vacuum bagged for me. Uh, historically, in fact, you've seen some of them on cooking segments here at Fishful Thinker, and they will hold pretty good four or five months in the freezer this way, no problem. Oh, yeah. For so, sure. yeah. Plus, the fish skin has oil in it. it yes, helps. correct. All right, perfect. So, you're all set. So, guys, if you want more information on Tracy Tomkey at Tomkey Fish Farms, uh, TomkeyFishFarms.com, correct? Correct. Yep, so check them out, TomkeyFishFarms.com. Uh, consider if you're a corporation and you want maybe to be connected with these guys, you've got a giant list of huge uh, companies that sponsor your stuff. It's all for free, what you're bringing your kids out here to do, yep. like 1,200 of them a year come through here, and it's all yep. free, all because of the corporate companies no that help you out. No cost to you. Yeah, that is fantastic, guys. All the kids get a prize. We're hoping to film with him later in the year. We'll see. So thanks, Trace, for taking time out of your day to teach us this. Guys, if you want to join the conversation on social media, that's at Fishful Thinker across all platforms. Otherwise, we hope you'll tune in. We'll see you next week.